Rick Hendrick spent how much on Kyle Larson's Indy 500 run? Welcome back to Break Hard. My name is Matt. Yes, let's talk about the elephant in the room real quick. I did swap out one of the Jeff Gordon die casts on the bookshelf. That is the only thing that has changed. So let's move on to what we came here to talk about today. And that is how much money Rick Hendricks spent on Kyle Larson's Indianapolis 500 run. And typically Indianapolis 500 only programs typically cost between one, one and a half million dollars. Rick Hendricks spent $3 million on Kyle Larson's adventure to the Indianapolis 500. And now let's preface, that includes everything. That's not just the race. That's the private test that they had at Phoenix. That's all the sim time. That's all the travel back and forth from Charlotte to North Wilkesboro, from Charlotte to Indianapolis, and back and forth across the eastern side of the United States. Multiple helicopter rides from the airport to the uh, racetrack. It's everything included. And honestly, when you think about it, $3 million for the amount of exposure Kyle Larson and HendrickCars.com got was probably a great return on investment. Obviously, HendrickCars.com has become the Red Bull of sponsorship and motorsports at this point. They're kind of sponsoring everybody, it seems like. I mean, even John Force had HendrickCars.com past weekend in NHRA. They're sponsoring Kyle Larson. They sponsor their own cars down the Xfinity series from time to time. They sponsor Roger Carruth in the truck series. Like I said, they're kind of like the Red Bull. We're just going to slap our logo onto everything right here. The old spray method, like a shotgun. Is that what they are? Like the bird shot. That's what I'm looking for right there. That's what they're doing here. And it's working out really well. $3 million for the amount of, like I said, exposure they got. Kyle Larson was the most talked about guy in motorsports for a solid two-week period right there. They sold the mer most merch out of anybody at the Indianapolis 500. Kyle Larson sold the most. So there's tons of HendrickCars.com merchandise running around there. I mean, heck, I even bought a Kyle Larson IndyCar diecast as well. Kind of Wish I bought the double die cast now that it didn't actually happen since he didn't ever even race that car. Would be kind of a cool thing to have and hold on to. Maybe I'll get one eventually. But in the grand scheme of things, $3 million, not too bad. So, of course, like let's talk about everything that's included in there. Obviously, Hendrick Motorsports, uh, Rick Hendrick, Jeff Gordon, they essentially leased a car from Aaron McLaren. Aaron McLaren prepped that fourth car for them, you know, supplied the personnel for it, got the car ready and everything like that. Rick Hendrick just paid for it. HendrickCars.com did as well. So you're talking about all the fuel, all the tires, all the engineers, all the time and effort that went into it. The engine lease program as well. Everything came out of Rick Hendrick's pocket and that's what funded that car to be on track. And then you also have the private test that they did a couple months ago at Phoenix so Kyle Larson could get a feel on an oval for the first time as well. That was also footed by Rick Hendrick. Then you have the sim time, and that's kind of a toss-up between uh, both the Chevy simulator and, you know, Chevrolet and HendrickCars.com and Hendrick Motorsports and everybody kind of all comes together to pay for that. And then you have all the travel, right? Kyle Larson made multiple trips from Indianapolis back to Charlotte, Indianapolis to North Wilkesboro, all on private jets. That is not cheap whatsoever. And then you have the travel from the racetrack to the airport on the helicopter. And then you have a suite that Hendrick Motorsports had for the Indianapolis 500 that had 80 guests with it. And then when Kyle Larson left to go from Indianapolis to Charlotte to try to make it into the Coke 600 before the race finished, you have three private jets following him in succession there. So again, Rick Hendrick was just out here like Scrooge McDuck, just throwing money around at this point. And I think it was all worth it because at the end of the day, they'll never release, uh, you know, the ROI that they got on the program at all. But HendrickCars.com obviously will continue to sponsor Kyle Larson until, as Rick Hendrick said, a better offer comes along. And if you listen to what Rick Hendrick and Jeff Gordon had to say uh, before last year, they said that they did have an offer from another sponsor and HendrickCars.com, because it acts as its own entity away from the race team came to them and upped their offer on, you know, the yearly basis on how much they'll provide or pay for a year's worth of sponsorship. So Rick Hendrick and Jeff Gordon went with that. And I know there's a ton of people out here that are like, oh, this is just Rick Hendrick sponsoring his own car. If you want to break it down, technically, sure. It's a Rick Hendrick company sponsoring another Rick Hendrick company, essentially. Yes. But that... $25 million or whatever they're paying per year is still coming out of the marketing budget for HendrickCars.com. So it's not like this is a complete wash and write-off. Like, it still has to make financial sense. Because if it didn't, they would absolutely go out and sell sponsorship for Kyle Larson. Because at this point, Kyle Larson can easily attract sponsors if they want them. 
Uh, but for now, the HendrickCars.com and Kyle Larson duo has kind of become synonymous with one another. It is the only paint scheme on the racetrack that is nearly consistent for all 38 weekends out of the year. Yeah, they have a Valvoline scheme in here and there, but for the most part, that HendrickCars.com number five is the most recognizable car on track every single week because it remains the same every single week, barring, like I said, a couple of races. So for Rick Hendrick, that $3 million certainly was 100% worth the spend on this because he got a ton of exposure from it. The HendrickCars.com got a ton of exposure. Kyle Larson has easily been thrust into the spotlight as the most diverse racer on the planet. I know the Europeans don't want to hear it, but he's at this point has a better resume in terms of driving skill set than what Max Verstappen has. We're not getting into that right now. So for the $3 million, honestly, it almost comes across as a little cheap at the end of the day in regards of how much exposure they got for it. So for them, great spend. Hopefully they haven't committed to returning next year in 2025. Obviously the waiver drama, I'm sure might deter them a little bit, but hopefully they do return next year. And, you know, obviously you're not going to have to do a private test with Kyle Larson because he already has, um, he already has a full Indianapolis 500 under his belt. Maybe the only thing you want to do is just when they have the fall test at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, send Kyle Larson up there and we'll just run pit stops the entire time. Just get in on a pit road so you don't speed uh, the next time he goes to do this event. But at the end of the day, $3 million seems like it was well worth it for Rick Hendrick and Jeff Gordon. Let me know in the comments what you think about the spend on it. Like and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on TikTok at Break Hard, Instagram and Twitter at Break Hard Blog.